About a year ago, I made a video talking about FNAF fan games in Scratch. That video went over the development and uh, conditions of some of the FNAF games that were popular and some of the FNAF games that weren't as popular on the site. So I'm gonna uh, come back to that topic, except for I'm gonna show you guys how I make my FNAF games. It's been a minute since I've made anything on Scratch. Uh, I've had projects that I wanted to work on, but I've been busy with a lot of other things. It's, it's just a little, you know, a little creativity flow kicking in, you know? We all get motivated sometimes. And uh, with the new release of the Graveyard Shift at Freddy's, I believe, horrifying game, uh, it's given me that motivation to come back and uh, work on some projects again. So, with this series, uh, we're basically going to start off, um, with this being the first video of course, we're going to start off with design. What do you want your game to look like? What do you want it to smell like? What do you want it to make people feel like? Take a moment to think. I mean, you've, you've clicked on this video, you know, you, you want to make a game. I'm not saying this for everyone. I know some people have a, a dream idea cooking up that they want to put into production, but they just don't know how to. But what do you, what do you want? So think of like, th this is like your time to shine, man. Like make up some kind of cool location, make up something that just is you, you know? It comes straight from your brain because people are going to see that and they're going to be like holy shit this is this is fire or something you know or people could be like holy shit this is horrifying go into detail on anything you feel will be significant to your game's production and then boom even with like subtle story things like there was no reason for me to put a fucking parking lot right here but i did anyway because i thought that the location was pretty cool uh uh, I was even going to go in and, and draw like the actual building from the outside and stuff. Like do all sorts of that small stuff. Build up a universe around your game before you fully settle in for developing the whole thing. So you know in the end what you want to do. Now of course do not go crazy with the design of your game. Alright. That's where things get a little you know hit or miss. So. I've seen this with a lot of games, uh, I've, I've played many FNAF games in the past and they've all suffered by having too much, uh, too many cameras, uh, too many office elements, too many mechanics that just don't really make sense, uh, too many things that are just over complicated. If, you, if you're playing this game right and someone tells you, oh, if that guy's in the vent, you'll want to do a backflip do a karate kick to the door button and make sure it stays shut for 10 seconds and then open it back up, check the camera, see if he's still there, do a triple backflip, hit the door button. If he makes a fucking sound like, yeah, then he's gone. Like, that's, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. You don't, you don't want something like that for your game. All right. Just make something simple. You don't want to have too many cameras. You don't want to have too many like useless elements to your game. Sure, it's cool for the story, but, or like the world building you're trying to do, and sure, it may be a realistic element, like having cameras everywhere in certain spots or outside cameras and stuff like that. Like, it, things like that aren't really useful to the gameplay. It's like with uh, FNAF 1. Why are the animatronics going to the back of the door when they could just walk right in you know does that really make sense no but we don't really talk about that so just forget i said anything but it's one of those things like think of the original fnaf one game there were some cameras in there that you just do not look at same for fnaf 2 there are cameras that you just don't look at because the game is it's got so much going on you can't really like look at those things if you want someone to really pay attention to the environment of your game you have to design the game flow in a way that makes the environment tie into the things that are going on with the game flow 
maybe like if you have 27 cameras and you're like man this is awesome this this is flushed out you can see every fucking detail of my my game uh you can see animatronics in each camera they'll, they'll all visit every room until they get to you is that practical you know is that really practical if anything you would need a really long ass night to even accommodate for that amount of cameras because not only are you gonna have to program the animatronic and design different views of that same camera over and over again for all 27 cameras with different animatronics in each of them you're also going to have to basically make that animatronic move fast as fuck because there's no point to even look at the cameras if he's just going to show up at your door and give an audio cue so the best way to go about something like that is use less cameras and make those cameras important Maybe you don't have a sound cue that plays when they're at the door. Make the cameras determine where that animatronic is and uh, let the player know that, oh shit, like I have to use these cameras or else I won't know when he's at the door. But then that leads to another thing. Maybe that player will stay on the camera outside of their door and not look anywhere else. Well, that's when you incorporate something else to back that up. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically think of stuff that you could really simplify and things that have positive play on your game basically like uh think about jolly bees not no not jolly bees what was it jolly three was the game it had so many cameras but the main goal wasn't just the monitor animatronics that showed up in your room it was also to find out which fan on each of those cameras was gonna break down and that was what made you look around it, it's it's things that could help out your gameplay and stuff like that but you don't want to go too in deep to it uh, you just really need to think about the gameplay and find something that works for the design of my building I chose to have uh, just a restaurant really um, you don't have to do a restaurant you can do all sorts of other things like this video is not a tutorial or anything it's just showing you what i'm doing but what you want to do is completely up to you uh you can make anything really warehouse basement building someone's apartment uh, i don't know you name it bro but just go all out like it's it's your mind it's your game make it however you want it um for the design of the office i went ahead and drew up a sketch really of uh what i wanted my office to look like um i wanted it to have a window uh, a desk two doors um nothing too crazy uh, i wanted the animatronics later on in the game to be able to like peek through the window and stuff like that make it like a little bit creepy uh, to see them standing there looking at you through your office, uh, which is like your safe point. I wanted the office to be like a bit bright. I wanted it to be um, colorful, looking like, you know, safe and comfy and all that stuff. Uh, I didn't want it too bland. I will definitely go back and add more uh, details and stuff to the office, like computers and fans, maybe posters and stuff because you don't want your game to look too bland but um it's just a sketch uh that will definitely determine some of the aspects of the design in the game and uh i feel like uh this is you know a pretty good start you know uh you don't want to go too crazy with the design you don't want to make something that is insane and impossible to even create inside of the scratch vector thing without taking months on end to design to so definitely take it easy or even use different applications that could design stuff like this or like find out something that you like a, a certain style if you want to go 3d go 3d if you want to go like draw everything and then uh add it into scratch kind of like like what I'm doing drawing this, I could literally take this and put this in scratch and use this 
as the office and then have the game just go on a whole sketch style type thing i mean that is a good idea i'm not saying you guys don't have to like just pull up and do something crazy man like if you want a sketch style game go for it just just mention me because i just came up with that idea and now i i really want to do it but um i i might actually do that to be honest that, that's a good idea i just cooked but uh anyways this isn't about that this is about just your sheer choice in design do whatever you want to do as long as it still serves a good purpose for the game and uh just works you know with vector design i tend to start out with just shapes as a lot of people do when it comes to that sort of thing uh once you master the art of uh like turning shapes into what you want it to be then you're set you just you automatically get something out of every time you go into design for your games and stuff like that and sprites and and uh certain things designs and screen elements and ui and all that stuff any anything that requires some sort of shape to even like exist or anything that resembles a shape like all you have to do is uh look at your room that you're in right now and look at all the shapes that are there i mean your walls are giant rectangles your door is another rectangle uh your tv giant rectangle square all sorts of things you'll just take that and then you know model it and mold it in the way that you want it to if you want a circle or like a fan just use a circle and you know use more circles and and cook up a fan that's it uh it definitely takes a lot of practice to get stuff like that down for sure but um yeah i mean making a fnaf fan game isn't something that you want to rush as well so definitely take the time to practice uh honing in your skills and uh i mean you can always release a fnaf fan game anytime you want uh it's just not recommended that you rush and spit out some like hot garbage or something to the community if you want to make a name for yourself for some of these games and if you want your game to be played or something like that definitely try to put in as much effort as possible into a game like this even if you want to take shortcuts definitely don't think like you should have to take those shortcuts because i mean with programming there are a lot of ways to accomplish one thing and there are a lot of ways to rush certain things that uh just make development easier but just try not to take the easy way out because um you'll end up with pretty bad disappointing reviews and stuff like that on certain aspects of your game and uh yeah that's uh that's my office uh it looks nothing like um uh, well it looks kind of similar it's it's like you got the 4k design then you got the you know the 720 design but you can always go back and add more but i'm happy with how my office came out and uh i will definitely get back to you guys on how to like program the part of the office um i will talk about the i think three ways of um having your office scroll around so like if you want it to be like fnaf one where you look at certain sides of the screen and then it, it'll auto pan over or you want it like my game where uh you just look around and your screen follows or if you want it to be um just still thanks for watching the design flow of uh how i create my offices and stuff that definitely won't be the last time you see some vector art uh being formed into cameras and stuff like that and building more elements of the game um next time we're going to work on getting the office to actually feel like you're in the room you know so making it scroll and all this uh, extra stuff um camera following and all that sort of thing so uh if you like the video just hit the like 
if you like the channel or any of the content I have, definitely check out some of the other videos I have. Um, I don't mainly focus on Scratch, but uh, I do play a lot of scary games and uh, I like to goof around with my, my friends. So definitely check out some of those videos while you're waiting for the next vid. And um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll get back to you guys. See you later.